Welcome to the 2022 Wheelchair Comparison, brought to you by the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation and Gold Pictures. We're going to show the features of each chair individually and then compare them all in the final episode. So stay tuned. I gotta tell you, when I get the stairs like this, it might as well be Mount Everest. So let's see what the iBot can do. Dean Kamen is the original inventor of the iBot. Um, Johnson & Johnson he manufactured the product um, from about 2002 until about 2010 and had you know great feedback from the market, a really happy and loyal user base. But unfortunately, they never could secure insurance coverage, either from public health programs like Medicare or from private insurance. And so in 2010, they, they notified um, the user community that they wouldn't be manufacturing any new iBots. The primary reason was as, as a public company, they had a fiduciary responsibility to serve their shareholders, and they couldn't find a way to to make the product profitable without insurance coverage. No one at Mobius or was involved in the iBot, you'll, you'll never hear them speak ill of J&J &J because we're really standing on their shoulders in terms of, of getting us as far as they did in, in the development of that technology. When Dean kicked off the redesign and he contacted me about helping relaunch it, I couldn't say no. It's designed, it's developed, it has this track record on, on the old version, which is amazing. I mean, there are still iBots, old iBots, the old version, they were built 12, 13, 15 years ago, which were still in use and people love using them. So, and it has a great track record of reliability and durability and low cost of ownership and safety. And we redesigned it and made it even better. It has updated electronics, uh, the software and, and the mode transitions are much uh, more intuitive and smoother. The battery technology has been updated to the latest uh, lithium ion technology. So the batteries are significantly lighter weight and the whole product is significantly lighter weight. Uh, the power base only weighs about 175 pounds. And so depending on the seat, the whole product weighs between 200 and 250 pounds. And so the new iBot, we have fully configurable seating and the seating can vary from a very low profile contoured seat that's almost akin to a manual wheelchair seat to some very high, high back, highly supportive complex rehab seating. Currently has tilt up to 21 degrees. Um, what we don't have yet is, is powered tilt and recline, uh, and we're working on that now actively. Um, the iBot uh, with the Easy Lock system was crash tested, so you can drive from it in the Easy Lock. And some people don't realize this about the iBot, but it actually uses this dynamic stabilization when it's on four wheels. And so when you go down a ramp, say, in a standard wheelchair, you would feel that incline. And especially if, if um, your disability is, is higher up and you don't have so much trunk control, that can be really uncomfortable or even unsafe. Uh, if you you know tip too far forward, the iBot automatically leans you back into the hill. And likewise, if you go up an incline, it'll lean you into the hill so you're not leaning back. It'll always be working to keep your seat level. Um, and in that four-wheel function, if you combine that, that dynamic stabilization with a device that's just much lighter weight and has four-wheel drive, and so it does really well in, in beach sand, across snow, mud, hiking trails. And the, the stair climbing function on the iBot actually works in a, in a very similar way as the other stabilized modes, but rather than balancing on just two wheels or balancing on the four wheels as you're changing, as the terrain incline is changing, um, it actually balances on a cluster of two wheels and just rotates those clusters up or down a set of steps. The key requirement for traveling with, with a mobility product with lithium ion batteries is that you're able to disconnect the electrical circuit from the batteries. So the batteries essentially can't draw power and possibly overheat. And it's, it's really simple the way you do it. And we actually have a nice little travel card that covers this and other factors of traveling with the iBot. Everything in my instinct says no. Oh, wow. You know, medical necessity does not stop inside the home. People with disabilities deserve innovation, deserve technology, and deserve to get out in their communities, get to their jobs, get out to the beach with their families, getting, you know, Washington to change its attitude about how it treats people with disabilities. It's slow and, and candidly, it's frustrating. There are a number of ways the general public can help. Probably, probably the best way 
is for them to contact their congressional delegation in their particular state, so where they live. And it would be best if they would contact the full congressional team. So both their senators and, and their representatives and basically ask them to support bills that require Medicare uh, to cover technology, innovative technology for people with disabilities. And in particular technology that goes beyond conducting activities of daily living in the home. I imagine most of the folks who, who will see your series are gonna know that uh, encoded in the, in Medicare's implementing regulations is language that basically says that Medicare will reimburse mobility products. And this is not just the iBots issue, it applies to, to all mobility products, but Medicare will reimburse mobility products to the extent they are needed for activities of daily living inside the home. Uh, and what that basically does is, is anything that does more than that. So like the iBot, for example, that gets you more easily out into town, out to a job, up a set of curbs, upstairs into your office building, maybe leading a business discussion up at eye level, going out for drinks after work with friends, you know, at a bar up at eye level and going up the stairs to get into that bar. Those are, that's not covered. And, and what has happened is it had a very chilling effect on innovation. I, I think it's outrageous that other segments of society, so much investment is made into things which frankly are trivial. They're conveniences or they're just outright trivial. And now you've got core needs, which affects millions of people, and the government can't get out of its way to do the right thing. Uh, it's, it's unacceptable, period. So the base price on the iBot is just under $32,000. Um, it can vary a little based on some options. So if you want extra batteries, that can add a bit of cost. And seating is probably the biggest variable, and that's kind of out of our control because we basically order and provide what the clinical team for the user thinks the user needs. The iBot comes with um, a really competitive uh, warranty. So things like the structural frame, the main chassis, um, seat interface, the drive wheels, all the structural components, those are five years. Things like electronics, um, motors, electromechanical components, those are two years. The engineering team that developed it is, is world-class. And so even though the upfront investment on an iBot is higher, the purchase price is higher, the total cost of ownership because of lower maintenance costs is lower. It'll last longer, it'll require less repair and less maintenance over the years that you have it. How do you go about getting an iBot? First thing you do is you would contact us. We have an email address on our website. It's info at mobiusmobility.com. And we've got a great team of people who basically act as your concierge to walk you through the process. And it's not, it's not very complicated and not all that unlike how you would access a regular a mobility device. And the training is a bit different because of the things that the iBot does, but we make the training, frankly, kind of fun. It's kind of like flight school and, and learning how to do something different. Press the menu button again and go one to the right and press forward. That's right. And press forward and hold. And now you're transitioning back to standard mode. Fantastic. The Wheelchair Comparison Web Series, brought to you by the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation and Gold Pictures.